Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to talk about objective questions that we always do on a daily basis to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Which of the following are the properties of gravitational waves? It forms invisible ripples in space when a star explodes in a supernova. It cannot penetrate in regions of space where electromagnetic waves have no reach and it travels at the speed of light. We have to choose the correct statement. So, as we have to choose the correct statement, the first statement is correct that it forms invisible ripples in space when a star explodes in a supernova. The second statement on the other hand is incorrect because yes, it can penetrate into regions of space where electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves do not exist. And the third statement is correct. So the first and the third being correct, the second being incorrect. The correct answer to this question would be option C, one and three only. Let's move on to the explanation. It forms invisible ripples in space that form when a star explodes in a supernova. Two big stars orbit each other and two black holes merge. Neutron star black hole merges. Moving ahead, it can penetrate into regions of space where electromagnetic waves have no reach. Gravitational waves are hypothesized to arise from cosmic inflation. That means expansion of the universe after the Big Bang. Gravitational waves travel at the speed of light and distort space-time on their path. Moving ahead, consider the following statements regarding precedence rule. A proclamation imposing precedence rule must be approved by both the houses of the parliament within one month from the date of its issue. The approval takes place through simple majority in either house that is a majority of the members of the house present and voting. We have to select the statement which is or are correct. Now, if we talk about precedence rule under Article 356 and 365, it, if we talk about the first statement, it is incorrect because a proclamation of the precedence rule must be approved by both the houses of the parliament within two months, not one, from the date of its issue. So, the first statement is incorrect, but the second statement is correct, which is saying that the approval takes place through a simple majority in either house of the parliament and that is a majority of the members of the house present and voting. Alright, so as we have to select the correct statement, the correct answer would be option B. Two only, a proclamation imposing precedence rule must be approved by both the houses within two months from the date of its issue and the approval takes place through simple majority. Moving ahead, initially valid for six months, the precedence rule can be extended for a maximum period of three years. Do keep this in mind. It could be a prelims question where three years becomes two years or one year or six months. All right. With the approval of the parliament every six months. And at every six months, the parliament needs to give it an approval for the ahead course of time. Right. Moving on to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding Indian Ocean Commission. It is the only island driven organization in the Indian Ocean bringing together the African islands of Comoros, Madagascar, Seychelles and Mauritius. India and Japan are observers of the IOC. Now here we also have to select the correct statement. Yes, if we talk about Indian Ocean Commission, the first statement regarding it is correct that it is the only island driven organization in the Indian Ocean bringing together the African islands of Comoros, Madagascar, Seychelles as well as Mauritius. And if we talk about India and Japan, they are the observers of IOC. So, both the statements being correct, the correct answer to this question would be option C, that is both 1 and 2. Moving ahead, IOC being the only island driven organization bringing together the African islands of Comoros, Madagascar, Seychelles, and Mauritius is also known as the Vanilla Islands. There are also seven observers, namely the European Union. The organization Internationale de la Francophonie. Also, the observer states of the sovereign order of Malta, China, India, Japan, and the United Nations. Moving ahead to the next question, which of the following was the Governor General of India during the Third Anglo Maratha War? Marquess of Hastings, Lord Minto, Lord William Bentick, and 
Earl of Auckland. So as we have to select the correct answer, here you can employ elimination method. Okay. Elimination method will help you get through questions like these. Either you know everything about the Anglo Maratha word, and if you don't, you can try the elimination method. How? Anglo Maratha word, if you know the year, which you obviously will, 1818 to 1819. Now, if we move on to Lord Minto, Minto Morley reform refers to the year 1909, so that is not possible. Sure. And William Bentick, if you could put your heads together for a little bit, it refers to Sati, right? William under the Lord, under the Governor General, William Bentick only, Sati Pratha was abolished. So that refers to 1829. Now, this is also close. But if you remember Auckland, I hope you know Auckland was involved in the Afghan war. And if we talk about the remaining, it's Marquess of Hastings. So, option A is correct over here. It's Marquess of Hastings. The third Anglo Maratha War, 1817 to 1819, was the final and decisive conflict between the British East India Company and the Maratha Empire in India. The war left the company in control of most of India. Marquess of Hastings was the military officer who served as Governor General of India from 1813. To 1823, his tenure as Governor General was a prominent one overseeing the victory in the Gurkha War and the final conquest of Marathas in 1818. Moving ahead, consider the following statements regarding Swami Vivekananda. He was hailed as a Dhyan Siddh, a meditation expert by his Guru Ram Krishna Paramhans. He later travelled to the United States representing India at the 1893 Parliament of the World Religions in Chicago where he introduced Hinduism to the world. He gave a new theory of ethics and morality based on the intrinsic purity and oneness of the Atman. So which of the statements given above is or are correct? Now yes, he was hailed as Dhyan Siddha, a meditation expert by his guru Ram Krishna Paramhans and he travelled to the US representing India at 1893 at the Parliament of the World Religions in Chicago and introduced Hinduism to the world. He also gave a new theory of ethics and morality based on the intrinsic purity on oneness of the Atman. All of them being correct, the correct answer to this question would be option D. Swami Vivekanand, 1863-1902, to born Narendra Nath Dutt, was an Indian Hindu monk and a chief disciple of the 19th century Indian mystic. And we have already discussed the first and the second statement, so we shall skip this. In 1897, he founded the Ram Krishna Mat and the Ram Krishna Mission, an Indian social religious reform movement. And this statement has also been discussed, so ladies, let's move forward, all right. Panch Muli Lake, recently seen in the news, is related to which of the following? Panchmuli Lake is related to Statue of Unity, option B. Recently, as many as 194 crocodiles have been relocated from Panchmuli Lake near the Statue of Unity, Narmada district, Gujarat, for the safety of tourists. This lake is also known as Tide 3 of Sardar Sarovar Dam. The lake offers a clear view of Indhachal mountain range and Sardar Sarovar Dam. As you can see, in this map, you would be able to see where Panchmuli Lake is. Here it is. Alright, let's move forward with our next question. Consider the following statement regarding happiness curriculum. It is a central sector scheme. It is for students from 1st to 5th standards. We have to select the correct statement. If we talk about happiness curriculum, it is a project of the government of Delhi. So the first statement is incorrect. And the second statement is incorrect because it relates to the students belonging from the class group from nursery to 8th. So the second statement is also incorrect. So the correct answer here would be option D, neither 1 nor 2. Recently, the Delhi government celebrated Happiness Utsav to mark the third anniversary of the Happiness Curriculum. The Happiness Curriculum was launched in July 2018 by the Dalai Lama. It is a Delhi government scheme. The curriculum has been running in all the classes from nursery to 8th standard in the Delhi government schools. 
Moving on, which of the following is the largest mountain range in Cyprus? Cyprus relates to Trudeau's mountain range here. Option C is correct. Recently, a major forest fire broke into Cyprus. It has been called the most destructive blaze in the East Mediterranean island nation's history. Civil defense volunteers have discovered the remains of people outside a fire-swept mountain village on the south central edge of Trudeau's mountain range. Trudeau's mountain range is the largest mountain range in Cyprus located in roughly the center of the island. Also, let's move on to our next question. Consider the following statements regarding community-based inclusive development program. It is launched by Ministry of Tribal Affairs and the program has been co-designed by TRIFIT and the Rehabilitation Council of India. We have to select the correct statement. If we talk about community-based inclusive development program, it is a scheme of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Okay, so the first statement is incorrect. And the second statement is also incorrect because it is a joint initiative of the Rehabilitation Council of India with help or with the help of University of Melbourne. So none of them being correct, the correct option here would be option D. The Union Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has launched a six-month CBID program on rehabilitation of Divyangjan. Those are persons with disabilities. The program has been co-designed by the Rehabilitation Council of India and the University of Melbourne. It aims to create a pool of grassroots rehabilitation workers at the community level. These workers will be trained for successfully discharging their duties. After training, the workers can then work alongside the ASHA and Anganwadi workers. They can handle cross-disability issues and facilitate the inclusion of persons with disabilities in society. The workers will be called Divyang Mitra, that is, friend of persons with disabilities. The Gindi National Park, recently seen in the news, is located in which of the following states? It is located in the state of Tamil Nadu. So the correct answer would be option B. The Gindi National Park, located in Tamil Nadu, provides a number of ecosystem services to the people of Chennai, and it is India's eighth smallest national park and one of the very few national parks located inside a city. It is located in the heart of Chennai's metropolitan area. It is one of the last remnants of the tropical dry evergreen forests of the Coromandel Coast. Moving on, consider the following statements regarding the project named Bamboo Oasis on Lands in Drought. It is initiated by Khadi and Village Industries Commission. It is aimed at reducing land degradation and desertification. We have to select the correct answer. So if we talk about the project BOLD, yes, it is an initiative of the Khadi and Village Industry Commission. And it is also aimed at reducing land degradation and desertification by the help of bamboo green patches in arid and semi-arid areas which are degraded. So the correct answer to this question would be option C both 1 and 2. Recently, the project named Bamboo Oasis on land in drought was launched by KVIC from the tribal village Nichla Mandwa in Udaipur, Rajasthan. The project seeks to create bamboo-based green patches in arid and semi-arid land zones. It is aimed for reducing land degradation and preventing desertification in the country. Moving on to the practice question for our next segment. Bagmati River flows through which of the following states? Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Assam. So, I hope you will be able to answer it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Tomorrow, we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.